you gotta accept the rules on airlines. Started in dust. Some passengers don't understand them. You're not gonna let me talk, I'm trying to... Why? I wanna know why! Others are more accepting. So I have no problem with your rules. I just wanna know what you want me to do. And one passenger gears up for a lifetime of obeying them. Get on the bus! Hurry up! Hurry up! Let's go! At Baltimore Washington International, Gina's got a tough situation on her hands. There's deadheads, meaning that Southwest Airlines flight attendants that need to go to Norfolk to work a flight out of Norfolk and have no seats left on the aircraft. She needs to find two extra seats on a full flight that's already boarding. We're the last two people to check in, and I can't get any volunteers, and I'm going to have to pull you off the aircraft, sir. That, that won't work. That's unsatisfactory. Com compensate you for it. I'm military under orders, and I need to get back. You're on orders? Yes, I am. They're on orders. I can't pull them. Great. Who were the last two before that? Two of the crew. Marcia Jane and Dad Tor, please come up to the podium here at B-15. Hi. Is it I call your name? Yeah. Okay. Um, right now, like I made an announcement, I couldn't get any volunteers. I can't do it. I'm going to Florida tomorrow. I got my son waiting for me right now. I can't do it. Um, I'm going to explain what we have to do to get these flight attendants on the aircraft. Well, I don't know why you picked me. The last, I'm doing it by the history that you guys checked in on the flight. I got tickets here to non-refundable. I, I, I have to be there. Sir. I understand. I don't know why you picked me. My I, son and I'm waiting for me right now. I can't do it. Can I have your... Can I explain first, please? I understand, I'm but my I'm from, from Elizabeth City, North Carolina. I'm, they're coming from Elizabeth City, North Carolina to Norfolk to get me. This is my first time flying. I don't know nothing. Please let me get on there. Yeah, I honestly, I can't. Um, Carlton, Carlton, give him his boarding pass back. I need him at the podium, please. What's what? The guy in the green shirt. In Palmdale, California, Michael Lindsay is preparing to leave home for the first time. He's been accepted into the Naval Academy near Baltimore. The Naval Academy has always been, in my mind, a prestigious college to go to, and I've always wanted to become a, a pilot. Uh, I know that they're building me up as a person, trying to build me up as a person, not tear me down. Like the saying goes, whatever doesn't kill you makes you stronger. I think about it, and I've practiced it over and over in my head, that last kiss. Um, I know he's going to be in wonderful company, and I know he's, like I said, he's just going to grow to be an awesome young man. So my tears are probably very selfish tears. And Mom isn't the only one who's going to miss Michael. His sister Jennifer and his dad Will are also sad to see him go. We've talked about this over and over and over again. It says, uh, you know, 15, 20 years, I can be calling you Admiral. He says, well... 15, 20 years, I could be piloting the first ship to Mars. It's all pride. Back at BWI, Todd Torre has been denied boarding. If he misses this flight, he may lose out on a $2,000 holiday. I got children waiting for me. How can I do this? Sir. I'm, I, I'm not trying to, I paid for this. This I, is not refundable. I understand that. If you could, let, just, Jesus. can I talk, I, I please? I to talk about I got a plane to make. I got family You're not getting on that aircraft, sir. Oh, why you pick me? I, the order you guys checked in on is... Ma'am, I came you're in. number one. What you got to do with me? I, I'm not, look, this is, you cannot close. just pick people yeah, like that. We're going to call somebody. I promise we'll I call somebody. I cannot do this. I cannot do it. I'm That's wrong. I'm denying you boarding, sir, and I apologize. You can't call me to apologize. What do you pick me for? It's from the history you guys should What history, ma'am? Ma'am, can I get on the plane, please? Can I see your boarding pass? This is what you go by, sir. Can I see no, your boarding man, pass? Man, this is not right, ma'am. You this got a number. Right. I don't down. care. I paid over two grand. Look, I have to get on this plane, ma'am. I understand ma that, sir, but there's No, you're not, not understanding an nothing. There's, it's not an option. You're not getting on that airplane. Why? You're not going to let me talk. I'm trying to explain. Why? I want to know why. You need to lower I your voice, I just spent $2,000, and I explained to me why. OK, everyone is. Nobody else has to hear this, sir. I don't care about anybody else. You, they don't care about me. All I know is I need you to be need on the to plane. You need to lower your voice, Ma sir. Ma'am, I ain't got to do nothing. 
I don't do nothing for you. Sir, I'm asking you to lower your voice. You're going to have to make me call the police. You call the police. Tell them, explain to them why the hell you pulling me off the damn plane Hey, for. I need the authorities to be 15, please. At Chicago Midway, Andrew Appleton is traveling with his son to Indianapolis. This is Marcus. He turns 6 September 13th, and he has cerebral palsy. And so it's a neurological disease of the brain. And uh, pretty much travels with me everywhere I go, so part of his life. Andrew wants to hold Marcus during the flight, but Southwest flight attendants are sticking to the letter of the law and have taken them off the flight. Colleen explains why. Any child over the age of two must be in a seat. So it's a safe it, for takeoff and landing, and it's a safety issue. It's not Southwest Airlines, it's a federal regulation. So the flight crew was questioning him for safety issues, no, nothing more. Is there any way Marcus can be in his seat for takeoff and landing? I, I mean, I mean, if that's what you want me to do, I don't think it's safe, but. No, uh, I, I, yeah. I want Marcus to be comfortable, comfortable. and safe I mean, as well as you. With his condition, he has no control. So it, all a seatbelt's gonna do is gut and, you know, wrench into his gut. So I have no problem with your rules. I just want to know what you want me to do. Right now, what we're going to have to do is talk to the crew when they get here for this next flight. They have to advise you of the regulation just like the last flight attendant did. Exactly. And right. if you choose to. Uh, I choose you know, to. Not to, so. Well, so if I don't put the seatbelt on, what are you saying? I can't fly? They just need to come up with a solution because I don't want to stop flying. And I'm sure there are hundreds of other kids out there that don't fly because of this. So, you know, I don't know what to do. The Lindsay family say their goodbyes at LAX. Michael and his mom start the 2,500-mile trek to the Naval Academy. Getting to the airport was fine, but when it started getting on, on the plane, it started getting tougher and tougher as you progress. Michael may be nervous about his new life, but he's happy to talk about it. Are you, are you just visiting or relatives? Or? I'm going to the Naval Academy, I'm sure. Well, maybe you'll be flying for us one day. There we go. You know, <laughs> it could happen. It's really nice to have you guys with us, and good luck to you. Good luck to you. Thank you. Ma'am, this is not right. This is totally... At BWI, Gina's called in reinforcements to help calm Todd down. Call whoever. I don't give a damn. Call Bush. I don't care. I gotta rebook you, sir. You gonna rebook me for what? Can't stay here tomorrow, man. Oh God. Can I see your boarding pass? Yes. See, this is crazy. Well, I need to get on that. You need to turn either. around. Ma'am, I ain't got nothing to do. with Look, I cannot be here tomorrow. I have to be somewhere tomorrow. I understand that, and I'm sorry that I have to do this. I don't, I don't feel you're sorry. I don't feel you. I don't believe you. What you're doing to me is you, not only my family, everybody. What you're doing, you don't understand what you're doing here, man. No. What the f is this? This is not customer service. I know that. Back at Midway, Andrew is giving the full story on why he and Marcus, who has cerebral palsy, were taken off their flight. So when we got on ready to take off on the runway, they stopped the plane and said, you got to put him in the seatbelt. And I said, I can't do it. Take us back to the gate if you want to. And the pilot said, we'll go ahead and go. So we left. The next flight to Indianapolis has arrived, and Colleen decides to talk to the flight crew. I have a regular car seat that I'm having baggage service bring up. Right. And I'm, I'm you know, he can gladly use that to complete his trip. Right. But he's, uh, he's clearly handicapped. I don't know, you know, so do we stop him mid-trip? Or do we give him the car seat and offer some assistance? I don't... If we use the car seat, then he'll be completely strapped in. He will be strapped in, but he has no support. Yeah. I'm going to yes. offer the car seat to Dad. Yes. And um, I told him, we, it was just after 5, we couldn't get a hold of Dallas, but I told him that, you know, we have advocacy, spe advocacy specialists that we can contact. But I'm going to go ahead down and talk with Andrew again then, OK? okay. And hopefully the car seat's here. Thanks, you guys. Now I have car seats in the baggage service office that will offer some support. And I'll be glad to give you one of those to use on the flight, OK? Um, 
It'll offer some support, at least for takeoff and landing. And then if you need to hold Marcus during the flight, that, that's not a problem. But that's what you want to do. <laughs> Well, that's what we have to do. It's a federal regulation. Then you want to get our car seat? I mean, it's in. Do you have a? It's in the. Do you have a, a different car seat uh, that we can use? Seat. I this mean, car you can seat. Try. I don't think it'll work too well, but yeah. At BWI, Todd's flight has left, and the police have calmed him down. I spent over two grand to take my son to Disney World. If I don't go, it's over. I lose my money. I work hard for my money, and I promised my son I don't want to let him down. If I don't make it, I'm, I'm mud. It's all over. The time frame and everything is so crucial. I and, I, and I'm sorry, sorry. This because is because they're non-refundable. I blow it. It's over. I know. And, and I've never had That's to me. do this ever, sir. It just it never it doesn't happen a lot. Okay. And I've been with the company three years, and I never physically had to deny somebody boarding yeah, from the history. It. You only do what you have to. Do. Gina has managed to get him a seat on the next flight in an hour's time. I'm sorry I yelled no, at you. I know. I, I didn't want to call the police. I hate That's calling cool. you guys. No, it's all right. But I'm I mean, like, calm down, please. No disrespect. I'm from New York. I'm used to cops. All right. Gina compensates Todd the cost of his flight for the delay. If I was a passenger, I would have been uh, very upset. And I totally understand the way he was acting. He, he just wouldn't calm down. And I, I understand that they were upset. Totally, totally understand that. And I felt horrible. It's 6 a.m. Michael and his mom have arrived at the Naval Academy in Annapolis. Good morning. Good morning. Hi. Your name? Mike Good. Good. It's definitely sinking in, and uh, I don't know. I guess I just can't wait to get it going. I feel like you know, all the years he's grown up to be such a wonderful young man that it's time. It's it's okay for to, for me to let him go. It's not long before the new recruits are taken for induction. He's just going into a place where there he's going to be well taken care of. So it's exciting. Julie will get one last chance to see Michael at the end of his first day at the academy. Andrew, you can go ahead. Back in Chicago, and everyone is chipping in to help Marcus with his car seat. Thanks, Anita, for bringing that out. Yeah, exactly, relax. This is his bad gear. He's a big boy. It's not certain. No, we got to have the other one. It's not certain. Yes, we need the other one. Okay, so we're going to have to get the other one. Okay. It's not FAA approved. Okay, we're going to need ours. This one's not FAA approved. We're going to have to retag it. Meanwhile, in Annapolis, Michael's new life takes shape at the Naval Academy. I think he's going to find that all that anticipation and all that apprehensiveness is really not, probably not as bad as he thought it was going to be. Outside, waiting on you guys. Some of them look so frantic, and I think, God, if I saw that frantic look on my kid's face, you know, I would just, it would melt. You will face right, file off squad one, two, three, single file up the yellow line. There's going to be stress, and there's going to be challenge, and there's going to be development, and we don't want it to be easy. Okay. My name is Midshipman Lieutenant Junior Grade Reeves. I will be issuing you your first period of instruction. He's probably going to hear my voice and a lot of their words. Sir, yes, sir. Yep, this is why mom told me to do this. That includes your killing butt. No! Be on the floor! One of the things that we want to do is uh, to reassure the, the parents uh, we're going to take care of their sons and daughters and, uh, and they will uh, become uh, better people through the process.
At LAX, Thomas Lubbering is carrying a torch lighter. Since 9-11, this type of lighter is not permitted on flights. He wants Southwest to hold it until his return. You know, it's not expensive, it's just I've had it for 20, 15 years. So why can't we make arrangements that this would be, we have a, a place, and if you don't pick it up within 60 days. But unfortunately, if we kept everybody's lighters. Right, hundreds of thousands here, a day, I right. don't think so. So is your suggestion to hire somebody just to take care of things that and you little incidentals with these people that used to never be a problem, and now it's a problem. But unfortunately, with all the changes after 9-11 and everything, and these couldn't... But these terrorists are affecting everybody, and it's not right that little stuff like this, because I could have matches, they so where's the locker? Don't they have them. lockers that are quarter, and you put a not locker? Not since 9-11. Nothing that... The, the not mailboxes are sealed. There are no mailboxes here. People used to just mail things back to themselves. They can't do that anymore. Those are sealed. The lockers are sealed. And those are all things that are beyond our control as a carrier using this airport. This is really a, a, a catastrophe, and how many people are upset every day because of this? At Midway, Anita's found an FAA-approved car seat for Marcus. Let me try to adjust that. Does it have this on for you guys? Yeah. yeah. That's where we travel. <laughs> oh, we did travel. Gotta put this through here. Yeah. I grew up in India. Yeah. Some of you should go. It fits, and Marcus is cleared for takeoff. I think it was resolved well. I, I think that um, obviously we have to follow federal regulations. I mean, there's a reason for them, and we want to do everything we can to assist people with disabilities. Now, can I get up and leave him here and go to the bathroom? Yes, I'll stay with him. Okay. Back in Annapolis, it's time for the Navy's Oath of Allegiance ceremony. Candidates, rise. Raise your right hand. At the end of the oath, I will give you the order to respond. At that point, I want you to say, I do, so loud they can hear you back in your hometown. Do you solemnly swear that you will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, so help you God. Respond. I do. Welcome to the Naval Academy. Julie waits anxiously to have a few last moments together with Michael. Back at LAX, Thomas has a theory as to what happens to confiscated torch lighters. Let me ask you something. Don't you sell everybody's lighter and everybody's pocket knife? You got them up there by the ton, and then you have a big auction at the end. That's TSA. That's what I'm Airlines saying. So somebody's not, making money on it. I don't know that they sell those items. I don't yeah, know what they, they do. do. They, they confiscate them. them. I know they that much. And then they I don't sell know what them they by do. the pound or whatever, and so somebody's making money. You might want to ask them what they do with them, but I know they confiscate them. I don't know what they do after that. Okay, so that's my memory and history, and it's now yours, right? And there's no options. There's no, here's here's our receipt. You don't get it. You can't claim it. It's not even an option anymore. Right. The TSA upstairs, if you would like, has a bin that people put stuff in, and you're more than welcome to put it up there so that you don't have to give it to Southwest Airlines. Well, it's not that. It's I just mean, we also I... don't want the items because then it's our responsibility to dispose of them. All right. Uh... That's just exasperating. I know that I the only voicing is not you. You didn't make the rules. I feel like I'm in a foreign country now, and that really is annoying. And, and it's not something that I've created. It's something that someone else has created and really pushed me to where I went, what is going wrong? He hasn't flown that much since 9-11, and a lot of the rules have changed. And he was unaware, so we just wanted to try to educate him. So leave these at home, unless you pack it in your luggage. But you probably should just leave it at home. In Annapolis, Julie awaits her last moments together with Michael. Michael! <laughs> you doing okay? Yeah. You look so handsome. It's the last time she'll see him for several months. So you haven't been picked on yet. Cool. This is a good thing. I love you so much. 
You good? Alright. Finish up the top. Do your best. And keep smiling. Alright? That's what's gonna get you through this, remember. Your sense of humor. Alright. See you in August. Yeah. Alright. I did very well. I just, you know, looking at his face and looking how confident he felt and he what didn't break down because I think if I had if he had broken down, I would have broken down. It's all about control on airlines. A passenger goes haywire at Midway. Screw you guys. Hear me? The whole family, screw you. Staffers are on cruise control. Joey! And one airline employee loses it in Baltimore. At Chicago Midway, Thomas Wire was pulled off an earlier flight to Tampa for being intoxicated and told to come back once he'd sobered up. Yeah, hey, I waited. I've been here from 6.30 in the morning. I know. Till now. I know. What time is it? What time is it? Right now it's a quarter to seven. Really? So it's almost 11 hours, right? Now I talked to you. I talked to, you. I talked to your brother. 12 o'clock. I, I, I don't care who you're talking to. You're talking to me now. Okay. Well, he's asking what? for me to what? refund your ticket and you not travel or go on the cruise. He don't want me to go in at all? They told me, like, get rid of me. Well, they didn't they necessarily me get rid of me. say that. But am I any different than when I was when you took me out the plane? Well, you're not staggering. You're standing straight right now. I wasn't standing before. I was sleeping on the plane with my shirt off. I had took my shirt off. I know. That's why you took me out the plane. You got to take my shirt off. I took you off the plane because you couldn't walk straight. Okay. Right now, I want my flight. Refunded the ticket, sir. I don't care if you didn't think... So if he's refunded the ticket, there's no way for you to travel there. It's not good. This ain't good at all. Okay. So let's, let's go make let's a phone call. call. Him. Okay, let's go talk to let's Jim. Let's go. Several thousand feet above the terminal, the pilot of flight 1004 is forced to make a dramatic U-turn and return to the airport just minutes after takeoff. Once again, for the inconvenience, our maintenance personnel should be arriving here shortly. We uh, hope to get you on your way in here just as soon as they give us the okay. So uh, once again, folks, give us a few moments, and we're going to get you on your way. How far did we get before we turned around? It was on takeoff, and then he circled around and came back. Well, the stick shaker, I'm sure, came on because this angle attack's broken, and it sounded, like I said, without seeing it, it sounded like he said it's broken, and I don't know if that means it's ripped off or what. But I'll give you a call back in just a couple minutes. Okay. For some, the delay could be costly. So we got married, and our family's wow. in Ohio, and they're trying to celebrate. They're waiting for us. us. We got married. We have about 20 minutes to get there. Nice. They're going to hold the celebration. Cut your losses. You're cutting your losses? Yeah. All righty. Can we come back another day? Of course. Oh, we I love you guys. we got to get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> no Ohio today. I understand. If the maintenance team can't fix the fault in time, the flight will have to be canceled. Well, actually, we rotated the airplane kind of a little bit roll to the right. Back inside the terminal, Thomas pleads his case to Anita. It's very bad for you. Oh, well, you know what? My brother, screw him. No, hey, 
screw them all. These are my lives. I'm the same way I was four hours ago. I'm a plane, mm -hmm. off the plane. Mm -hmm. I'm not changing. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm a criminal in the airport. Why are you I'm the same person. But I don't That's want it. you to be the same person that you were before. That's it. This is me. You got your phone list for your brother's phone number? Actually, I really didn't want to go with my family under screws. Because maybe they get sunk or something. I don't care what happens, but. Let me talk to him. But right now, I really don't want to go. And now she's helping me out real good. She's being a mediator of people that like, don't want me to be there anyway. Hello? Yes. Do you not want me with you or what? What do you want to do, Jim? Jim, what do you want to do? Well, I'm telling you, Jim, what do you want me to do? You want me to just go home and like, Screw you guys? Because if that's the case, screw you guys. Hear me? The whole family, screw you. Trust me, wash your hands of me right now and tell me that right now because I'll walk. I'll walk right now, I'll wait for a stupid bus or whatever I gotta do to go back home, but don't ever, ever, ever ask me to go somewhere with you again or be part of your life again. Hear me, Jim? I'm not kidding, Jim. See you, bye. You know what? I'm not okay, and Midway sucks. Because you know what? Midway is the worst place in the whole world. Worst. I've never been dealt with this. My family lost me, you guys lost me, and I lost you. You lost my family with me. My family sucks. You guys suck. Sorry, I took my shirt off. Sorry. Yes. He did walk away. Okay, bye-bye. He basically just said it was hard, but the best thing for the family to do is to cut him off. So the brother just wanted me to get his bag. He would pay for his bag to get to, the, to his home. Thomas is running out of options. At Midway, a mechanical problem forced Captain Eric Lindstrand to abort a flight to Columbus and circle back to the airport. Well, what happened is right after we uh, lifted off in the field at uh, Chicago, the, uh, we get what's called a stick shaker. And it's the control yokes just start shaking. Just, it's a warning indication, uh, normally associated if the airplane is at a stall position, which is not a good position to be in. We just felt it would be best, uh, safest action would be to turn around and come back here into Chicago, let them fix the issue, and uh, continue on to Columbus, which is exactly what's going to happen. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, here's what's going on. The, uh, the component that, uh, that broke, we've got two of them on board. With the one busted, it generated an error between the two, which caused the indication up in the cockpit. So what they're going to do is they're going to go ahead and take the bad one off the airplane, and we're going to press on. So we're going to go ahead and uh, get our paperwork filed and uh, hopefully get out of here just as quick as we possibly can. Hey, if I was the black cloud, I'm out of here. Here you are, because this is one of those days. <laughs> hey, I enjoyed it. Thanks you guys for all have the help. Right. Yeah, hey, thanks for all the help. All right, Eric, see you later. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, if we get everybody to take their seats, we're going to be out of here. Thank you. That's good. I want to have that party over here. For those on the front line, life can be difficult. You, Southwest. Distressing. It's obvious that Southwest is falling. And downright demanding. Why? I want to know why. You need to lower I your voice. I just spent $2,000 and I explained to me why. So a few of the airline team are swapping the high drama for the high seas and taking a relaxing cruise to Mexico. It's about time we all get together and have fun and not worry and not stress out and not be at work where we can all relax. Oh, yes. After spring break and how busy it was and after the past year, I think we all deserve this break. I'm the king of the world.
We want you back. It's not fair. <laughs> also have a prize for the last place dancer, for the worst limbo dancer. Oh! In Chicago, Anita's attempts to reunite Thomas with his family haven't gone unnoticed. That stupid over there, she should have never gotten in the middle of my business. She should have never gotten in the middle of my family and me. Never. Mediating between me and them? She don't know me. Am I drunk? No. Am I intoxicated? Maybe. Not. Wrong again. But you know what? I'm pissed. They ain't my family no more. No. From this point on, Midway Airport has cut me off from my whole family. They can kiss my ass for the rest of my life. I can die without them, and I can die without me. I will never go to their graves. I'll never go to their funerals. Nothing. F Midway. F everybody here. I'm going home. I don't care how I get home. I don't care how I eat. Screw them and screw them the rest of my life. You know what? They're not family. I hope to God that. The boat goes down somehow. <laughs> and, now, and guess what? It didn't work out anyway. I love it. I love it. I can't get enough of it. I swear to God. This is so funny and pathetic. At Baltimore Washington International, passengers and staff are suffering the after effects of weather delays. We've got to get you guys sitting down because we got to deal with people that are trying to get out of here now. And the pressure is starting to show on Jennifer. <laughs> Tony Spittler missed her connection to Jacksonville. We just flew in from Providence. Our plane was delayed. Our flight was delayed until 9.20. So they put us on another flight here. And they, I asked about the connecting flight. And they said, oh, don't worry. That flight's delayed as well. You'll have 20 minutes to get to it. And then my connecting flight leaves two minutes before my plane lands. They still haven't brought the supervisor over here yet, so. The earliest I could get you out would be Sunday night at 810. I mean, I, unfortunately, there's been so much going on. I mean, I, I apologize for the situation. I did not, I wasn't, I wasn't, my apps agent didn't tell me that. Okay, everybody on canceled flight 230, listen up, listen up, listen up. I have been advised by my station manager for everybody to use our confirmation numbers, call the 800 number to rebook. That's not right. That's, that's not reasonable. That's not right. That's what I was informed by my manager. And she's as high as up as at the station you can get here. Looks like Tony could be stranded for two days. Having been left behind by his family, Thomas seeks assistance from Colleen. I, like, I don't have nowhere to go right now. So can you like help me out with that? So, I, I, can, right now. I can help you look for a distressed passenger rate for a hotel, but I, I won't provide that for you, sir. So, you're going to get me right home? I live in Rockford. I am Rockford. not. I am not. So, how can I get home? I'm not sure, so sir. Like, you, you can go down and you can check the shuttle services downstairs. No, 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 no. I'm asking you, what can I do right now? I'm sorry, sir. I, your trip home is not our responsibility. I can oh, no, help. Wait. I can help. How am I going to get home? Please. I can help Please. you. Okay. I have no money. Is it my turn? Is it yes, my turn? Yes, okay. Yes. I can help you look at a shuttle service. I can help you get the information, but I will not. You can't help me at all. I can't. I will not pay so for. So I got to walk home anyway. I'm not sure you're how you're getting back to Rockford. Tom, I'm not sure how you're getting back to Rockford. So you don't care. It, Tom, you're asking me to pay for your way home. I'm and asking I'm, for some help here. And I, I have I, no help here. Okay. What am I supposed to do? I have no help here. Something, anything to help me. The police will call social services for you, Tom, if you think you need well, social services. Well, I need services. a ride home. I'm sorry. But I need a way home. You know, if you need Please. to call a friend, get it. I don't know we'll let you. OK, Tom, I don't know what I can do for you then. If you want the police to call social services, we can do that. But I'm sorry, it's not. I need, some, I need help. I need okay. some kind of helping hand. I'm sorry, anything. Tom. I'm a sorry. A bus pass, anything. I, I'm sorry. I, I can't I'm do that. I'm sorry. In Mexico, Nicholas and friends make their first port of coal and check out the local tourist attractions. Well, we, we're at the winery. 
we're really excited because they said they have 40 different wines, 40 different types of wines to taste, so I plan to taste every one of them. You only have two hands in one mouth. I'm tasting all these, see? <laughs> I should get some more. No, you should <laughs> It's like orange sherbet. Oh, don't make that thing. Oh my god, this is. Don't you just want to lick the inside? Oh my god. It is good. One cup, Denise. Remember what he said, not full. Gina, look on. This is how you taste wine. You take, you swirl, you smell. You swish? No, you can't. I don't swish. What are you gargling? <laughs> <laughs> Taste it. <laughs> Come on, Gina, you can chug it. Chug it, bro, chug it. But it's quite tasty. It smells good. Um, it has a nice, nice smoothness in the, on the palate. I don't drink wine. <laughs> While it's high spirits in Mexico, Back at BWI, Jennifer has lost touch with Tony Spittler. I'm trying to get people to Louisville, trying to get people to Buffalo, trying to get taken care of the Tampa people, and pray I still have hair left on my head when I leave here tonight, or this morning, whichever comes first. Tony's request for a supervisor has fallen on deaf ears. I had a soup here, and unfortunately, I guess she went over to do Tampa. Um, so to be honest with you, I don't know. I apologize for not knowing. All I know at this point is that I work here. You know I've been standing here for an hour now. I know that. I mean, I, I apologize, but... Tony puts in a call herself. Yes, my connecting flight left two minutes before my my flight got here. But no, they're like, oh, we're all booked. And I've been standing here for an hour when she said she was going to go get a supervisor. And then she was like, oh, well, the supervisor came over here, but I guess she left. I've been standing right here the whole time. At Midway, Thomas is still trying to convince Colleen to help him get home. Right now, I'm here. I'm stuck here, uh, 90 miles from home. I am no way home. So how am I going to get home? Tom, that's your Please. responsibility. I'm sorry. My responsibility? Yes, it is. Well, she got in the middle of it in the first place. It's not Anita's fault that you did not get on the aircraft. Right. She walked up and said, can I talk to you? Took your shirt off, took your shoes off. The crew shoes. asked, the crew asked. I got asked. slippers. OK, the crew asked. I got asked. slippers. Okay. That's shoes. My turn. My turn, Tom. Yeah, well, no, I'm talking crew, now. You, you asked when you were denied boarding, and I'm explaining it to you. You're she taking off the aircraft, and Anita gives you the opportunity to come back and try to get on another flight tonight. I came back. Several she, she told me and that she already worked out with my brother. She okay. said, forget it. Right. You're st because you're still drinking, and you're still impaired, and so Anita makes a decision that you cannot get on the aircraft. That is not Anita's fault, Tom. So, not. Wait, wait, wait. The second time I came back, she, you, you, you said, I'm too drunk still? Tom. We can't be involved in the situation. No, well, you, you are involved because I need a way home. I'm sorry, Tom. I need a way home, please. I'm sorry. I'm I, I'm not responsible for I that. I need a way home. I'm sorry. You you're gonna have to contact a friend or somebody to help. I got no friends. Back in paradise, things are a little less hectic for the vacationing employees. We were having a good time. Didn't have to go to work. And just hanging out with everybody. We don't get to see each other. They're in Baltimore, Houston, L.A., and Chicago, and we don't get to hang out together. We see each other on television. We don't get to hang out together. It was really nice. We had a good time. We miss work, but we don't want to go back. And tonight's a really special night. It is Denise's birthday, and um, we have a special surprise for her. She does not know. Her birthday is actually tomorrow. So, so we've been really avoiding she have it. A clue. Yeah, we've been totally avoiding it. We haven't even been talking yeah. about it. Nobody's mentioned yeah. it. She's Nobody's gonna be taken sure. aback. I can guarantee that. We've been good little secret keepers. Yeah. There she is. Good See chance. that smile of hers. anniversary of your 21st birthday. <laughs> I love you, Nicholas. I love you. 
but then you can also think, think of it, you're a half of 100. You know what, Nick? <laughs> and here's to many more to you. In Baltimore, Tony finally tracks down a supervisor. We ran off our plane, we were sitting up front, ran over here, and our plane was gone. There was no way we could have done that any faster. And I cannot Let me go over here and look at the computer. Okay, I can put you on the first flight in the morning. Because they were telling us there wasn't any flights until Sunday night at 8. Well, if they're all booked off, wait, I'll overbook it for you. Have a flight for tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock. Finally. Baggage service copy. But it took way too long. That took way too long. And I'm still mad because I wanted to go home tonight, which is an inconvenience, you know, to my family. So, at least I'm going home. Over in Chicago, Thomas's persistence continues. Can I borrow 20 bucks from you? I, I don't have Because there might be like $16. It's going to be a little more than that to get can, back can to Rockford. Can I borrow some money? No. Tom, help me get home. Okay. I'm, I'm not. You, please. I am help me not, get home. Tom, I am please, not please, sending please, you to Rockford. Please help His brother's me. on the phone now. Please help me get home. Yes. Really While you're on the phone with them, I'll try to call downstairs and see if they can get some information if there's even a shuttle bus available to Rockford. I'm not even sure if there is, but while you're on the phone with them, I'll try to do that, okay? Do you want to speak no, with them? No, he's not my family member no more, because you guys created this problem with me. No, he we didn't. He is no longer a family member to me. Tom, we didn't create this problem. Yes, you did. You created, she did. She got in the middle of us. They are not my family no more. Hang up the phone. I don't need to talk okay, to them. Okay, Tom, you were denied boarding. No, you are one of one time. She took me out of the plane. Twice. She took me out of the plane. I can't want to talk to her. All right. 7 o'clock. You want to hang out and call downstairs so we can try to see Call the cops. Service. Have a rest I got seven meals a day. Colleen. I'm done. I'm done. Hang, hang on a second. I'm okay. sick. Okay. I'll come home if I have to. I don't care. Really, Anita gave him every effort to still make another flight today. She gave him several hours, and he had that opportunity to take advantage of it and kind of stop drinking, and clearly he chose not to do that, so Anita was forced to make the same decision, but that, that was based on Tom's choices today, not ours. With a long road ahead of him, Thomas will have plenty of time to reflect on the day's events. on airline. A race against the clock proves time waits for no one. One woman's sense of time is another man's problem. Yeah, I'm not gonna make this flight because it's southwest. Time runs out on the play clock for some football fans. How long do you give a person a good here? And time is of the essence in Chicago. No, 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 She won't be alive. No. Most people's lives run like clockwork, but the minute you set foot inside an airport, all sense of real time seems to go out the window. I guess I don't want to miss this flight. Where are you going to? Phoenix. Okay, what time is your flight leave? Five o'clock. You've already missed it, sweetie. At LAX, Elise Wolf has missed her flight. Who are you? I'm Southwest. Yeah, you're Southwest, but why can't I get on this flight? Because the flight's, it's, it's fly, no, it's not 10 till, it's five o'clock. Yeah, well, well let's go ahead the and get you. Gone? Yes, it leaves at five o'clock. Do you know that it's gone? Yes, let's go over here to check in the computer. Can, are you getting all that on how much I hate this airline? My reservation was out of Burbank. 
I wasn't able to make that flight, so they said, just come over here as long as you get here 10 minutes before. I got here 20 minutes before. Listen to me. I'm trying to get, I'm trying to understand what's going on. You were in Burbank or you missed your I wasn't gonna make that flight, so, so I called, called Southwest, Southwest and I said, Can I go? Is there another flight? They said get to LAX if you get there ten minutes before five, you can take that flight at five o'clock. I go upstairs and I can't check my I can't bring my bag in because I have gifts in there that they're saying I can't but, but take. Not allowed to take so they're telling me I had to come all the way back to you and now you're telling me that I'm missing the flight. Yes, we missed that flight, unfortunately. The that, pl time. that plane is gone. Yes. It's gone. You know that for a fact. Yes, I'm looking. It's gone. That's beautiful. So what we can do is put you on the 6 o'clock flight. Yeah, and you guys suck. You really, really I'm sorry do. You this feel happens that way. to me every time I fly with you. Every time. What passengers are missing? What time in Chicago, the flight to Oakland is about to depart. But overtime in the bar could result in defeat for these football fans. We have some customers holding boarding cards that have not come to the gate to board. So we have to make a decision now whether or not to, to remove those people from the flight uh, so that we can push on time. Little does Colleen know, but the missing fans are drinking just 50 yards away. Um, Nick, if they're not here and we're ready to push, we're going to pull them and you guys might still make it, okay? Okay. Nick, do one more overhead. Do one more. We're doing an overhead? All right, we're at three minutes of departure. Remove the people that are not here to board and get these guys on. It's your lucky day, guys. <laughs> okay, I think this, this is a group, and I think they're in the bar. Is that them? The passengers are five Denver Broncos fans. They think they're heading for the end zone, but they're unaware there's been a fumble, and it seems the other team has the ball. We already checked. We checked over. change planes in Baltimore to get to ISIS. I'm just going to see if we have any other way to route you. At the other end of the terminal, Nancy Marks has missed her flight. My mother is dying. She's right now in the hospital. They gave her a couple hours, and I'm trying to get there. My daughter ran, but we never traveled from here before, OK? We went from O'Hara. She ran. We went down the wrong thing. Nobody told us. We just took it for granted that was wait. OK? She was here, but the, they closed the door already. In Los Angeles, Mike Carr passes along some useful advice to late passenger Elise Wolf. Well, if you get to the airport a couple hours early, you might not encounter this, but when you get to the airport less than yeah, well, 20 minutes... It's, it's really... That part is irrelevant, because if he said that I could get there and take the flight at 10 minutes, I got here 20 minutes. Yeah, but you had something that was not allowed to go through security, and obviously we, that's going to be something the airport has nothing to do with. If you're trying to get through Whatever. with gifts, Whatever. That, that, that contributed to this, exacerbated Whatever. already difficult situation. Whatever. Don't let this one experience ruin your day, ma'am. It's oh, not worth no. it. Oh, no, this Southwest ruins my day. Hi. Yeah, I'm not going to make this flight because it's Southwest. In Chicago, Nancy Marks still searches for a solution. My mother is in the hospital dying. OK, we have a couple of hours. I want to get there. You have a last flight at 7 o'clock. I don't want to be on that because she'll be dead when I get there. OK, I don't need to pack nothing. I just ran. See what's the next one, please. Can one of you guys call me at Bravo 15, Elaine or Phil? The only thing we have is the one, the next one that leaves at... Let me see what the... 445, changing planes in Baltimore, it gets you there at 1010, or the one that leaves at 730, gets you there at 1025. That's the only thing we have. No, 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 no. She won't be alive. No. In Chicago, V is trying to track down a group of performing Cossacks. Excuse me, sir. Yes. Who are you flying on? Uh, Southwest Airlines. You are? Yes. Cool, that'll work. OK, so what's the name of your group? 
Uh, it's Masinkov uh, Russian folk group. Oh, cool. So you you play? No, I dance. You know, like, I, I, you I, dance? I, I, I stuff, okay, yeah. do the real okay, thing. Okay, Come on now, get. Yeah. Let me let me hold your coat, right? <laughs> hold. Ooh. Oh, ready? Okay. Hey, 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 hey. All right, that's cool. Thank you very much. Thank all right, all right. I thought you were gonna sing a song or something for us. No, if I sing, uh, everybody. Oh, there's, there's my. Where singer, is the right singer? Nikolai is head of the Masinkov folk group and its principal singer. The group is flying to L.A., but have plenty of time before their flight to show V just what they can do. Do you sing opera uh, all the time? Opera? Oh, that was really nice. Back in Chicago, Colleen's last-minute tactical maneuver isn't going down well with the Broncos fans. We waited until the line cleared, and we came up when the line cleared, and because we didn't care where we sat, so we said, the heck with it, who cares? But when we came up, they said, nope, you're too late. The plane's right there, it's still connected, go figure. We made a, a final announcement, I, and we made an announcement calling you. We got the you paper from our airline from finding. our tickets. Does, does it matter? No, no it but doesn't. it doesn't say on here. If you could show me on my paperwork where it says come here 10 minutes early, that'd be great. You know what? Really? We made several announcements to call you guys back to the gate. We made every attempt to get you here. Um, how long do you give a person to get here? At 10 minutes of departure, you were subject to yep. cancellation. Yep. You were not in the gate. And you have three missed minutes, your flight. And at three minutes, you gave another announcement. Didn't yes, we did, and you and you didn't respond. And we got respond. here a minute later, had three announcements, we couldn't get on. Exactly. So we got to be here within like 10 seconds, or Sir, what? Sir, you missed your flight. You, you did not show we're up at the gate. We're right there, waiting for our fare. We got here at 10.30. You missed? 10.30, we've been here. You want to hear about the next available flight? Yeah, I want to hear the next available flight, and now I'd like to see a manager. I am a manager, okay, and then. I'm the one who's telling you you missed your flight. Okay, then it don't make sense. It may not make sense to Joey, but that's the game plan. Get my cell phone, this ain't right. I'll tell you that right now. In Los Angeles, Elise Wolf's outbursts are over, and she's rebooked on the next flight. That is your return tomorrow, so we 9.30 in the morning. Back into LA. Please. Back into LA. Get you here at 9.50. All right. All right? All right. I'm going to attach this to here. All right. I didn't charge you the difference. It was going to be $20 difference, but I weighed that. And she just can't hide her gratitude. There was nothing I could say that was going to make her feel good about Southwest or about the situation. She just, she's like a volcano. She spews. At Midway, Nikolai is serenading V on their way to gate 12. Like the U.S.? Yeah. Cool. That guy right there, he's our choreographer. Oh, is he? Yeah, he's All right. Crazy. Now, either give me my refund, I'll get another airline. Give me my refund. I paid cash. Okay, give me my what, refund. Is, what is your name? Nancy Marks. Give me a refund. See if ATA has an airline. You can do that much for me to get me out now. AT, what is that? Last name is what again? Marks. 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 They are they going to LaGuardia. That's fine. That's fine. I'll have them. It's closer to the hospital. Okay. This is all I'm seeing on the it's computer. At seven seven o'clock. It leaves here at 345. Gets to LaGuardia at 7 o'clock. We, get the, we go to LaGuardia. No, yeah, yeah, instead of Ice Long uh, MacArthur. Okay. Supervisor Denise finds a flight on another airline leaving in 45 minutes, but Nancy is still upset about missing her original flight. Your lady didn't want to stop it. She closed the door and she won't let her go through. And it was right there. I'm sorry, your lady was right. 
Well, this lady wasn't out because the plane wasn't over there. Yeah, it was right there. still there. Okay, and I'm sorry, that's wrong. My little girl just moved that. Okay, it was it was right there at the door. She slammed the door. She wouldn't even listen to her. That lady there. Okay, that lady doesn't need to work here. She doesn't have well, a mother. That's she. Let's go. She doesn't have a mother. That's she. Time for Denise to hear the other side of the story. The plane was um, out of the jet. They had pushed Basically. it back. Yeah, they already pushed it back. It was in. It was on its way on the right. J line. It was, it was on its way out. Mm -hmm. They don't not always understand when they see the plane this way. They don't make the connection between the jetway not being there. That station was out here. The plane was already pushed back, and she just didn't understand. Well, we got her on another flight. She's got to get there, hopefully, before anything happens to her mom. That's about all we, we did, as, as much as we could do. So no one's higher than you? No, no one is higher no, than Joe, you? No, Joe, no one's higher than me okay. today. Just a few hundred yards away, Joey's offense has gained him no yards. So brother Dave steps up the defense. I don't know him. All right. all right, come on up. He's my brother. I got nothing to do with him, all right? <laughs> OK. And Dave might have thrown in the towel, but Joey throws a Hail Mary and goes straight to customer services. The plane is still sitting here. They said they called our names, which we did not hear. So we came here at 114. Our flight's at 115. They said, you have to check in 10 minutes beforehand. The plane's already gone. I'm still looking at the plane right now. The plane's still sitting here. Once the doors are closed on the aircraft and the jetway's pulled, we can't, we can't do anything else. Um, right now, we've rebooked them on the next flight. So. The plane is just now backing up. I've been on the phone with you for two to three minutes. And I've been standing here for five. I'm having a crisis right now on the airframe. I paid money four months ahead of time. Where, uh, 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 it just don't make sense. I mean, I'm, I mean sorry, I don't know what to say. My brother made peace with her, whatever the case is, I'm not doing it. Well, I hear you, I hear you, I hear you. All right. All right. All right. Okay. Yep. Not it's over. Okay. Here. You guys are on the next flight. You're on this flight at 2.45. You're confirmed. Pick a ticket, any ticket. Go and try to have a good time and just say the hell whatever it goes. That's what you do. Not me. Not, not when we paid this much money for airfare, no. You're going to sit there and get aggravated over that. No, it's going to be I'm a not, long I'm not weekend, buddy. I, you Seriously. know what? I am aggravated because I we should tell. be on our way. Plus, you know what? The lady on the phone agrees with me and said they were wrong and we will be refunded our 20150. So, you know what? I'll never fly Southwest again. I guarantee it. Never. Grandma's flight, we have booked to Vegas. I'm canceling it. In Los Angeles, an emergency nose job threatens to strand 130 Oakland bound passengers. We've got a radar failure. And it's faulting the antenna, so we're going to change the antenna here. Yeah, it did. This plane's going to go somewhere, pick up more people, it keeps going down the line. You get a delay here, you we try to minimize it cause to uh, not get delays on the next leg. As passengers board the plane, little do they know that trouble lurks just outside the cockpit. They, I guess they must be discriminating against uh, big people. Charles Walton is heading home from Los Angeles. He's been stopped and asked to buy a second seat. It, I mean, it makes me feel pretty bad that, uh, you know, something like this would happen. And then he's probably going to try and get me on that same flight, but I'm not going to get get a seat where I was in pre-board to be able to get me a uh, comfortable seat on the plane. We finally got a flight. As news of Charles's problem spreads, his colleagues offer their support. Big Papa. That's Big Papa. <laughs> yeah, wouldn't stop eating, eating 24 hours a day. We walked around Slim Fast for a long time. He should have stole about three cases. <laughs> Next time I see you, I want to see at least 40 gone. 40 is gone. <laughs> well, his employer is trying to pay for the second ticket, so we're trying to get that all set we before the flight pushed, and it's getting really close to push times. 
As his friends get on board, Charles waits for his company to buy him a second seat. In Chicago, the Oakland flight is almost ready for boarding. Don't go nowhere. <laughs> don't hold your breath, don't read the Bible, don't do nothing. <laughs> 245 actually means 235. I'll never fly Southwest again, so. Southwest Airlines is pleased to announce inbound flight 269 coming in from Jackson. We are running 10 minutes behind schedule to, oh, due to an aircraft swap. Oh, so now it's your fault. Okay. But when it's our fault. Deal? Uh oh. Oh, hunky dory. Go Denver! I like that shirt. Very patriotic. Very nice. Yeah, very nice. The nice one was on my right flight, too. Walton, this is Southwest Airlines. At LAX, Charles Walton stands by while Mike tries to get his second seat paid for. You know, I'm trying to speak to Henry about one of your employees who's trying to get on a plane at Southwest Airlines. He's required to buy an additional seat. And the plane's ready to leave, so I need to speak to Henry. That should be him. Should be him. This is Dwayne. OK, this is good. That's your assistant. OK. Can I speak to Henry, please? Are you Henry? OK, we got your uh, one of your employees, Charles Walton, here. OK, you we haven't gotten the second ticket paid for yet. You haven't gotten the second ticket paid for yet. Okay, so this plane is ready to leave, though, so we're gonna, he's not gonna be able to make his flight if he doesn't get taken care of. So he's gonna come back in two minutes. He's saying that he, he somebody in Minneapolis is the one that does your reservations, yeah. and he's called them and it's supposed to take five minutes, but I don't see anything else in here for a walk. What's the push time? We'll find out. Hey, Jay, did this flight come in late? Let me see if people are at the jetway. They might be sitting here. Looking at the five to ten minutes pops, there's still people just okay. getting situated. Uh, form, so that's good. All Charles can do is wait and hope that the reservation comes through in time. Back at Midway, and there's still time to kill and balalaikas to play. In Los Angeles, engineers race to fix a faulty radar antenna in time for takeoff. Sometimes it just takes a long time to figure out what's wrong with it and get the parts, and you really can't help it, you know. But when you know what's wrong and how long it takes, and you're just trying to do it as fast as you can. But just as the aircraft is about to lose its flight slot, the nose is back on, and the passengers are heading for Oakland. None the wiser. Somebody on the phone there? Hold on. Sweetie, who's on the phone? Back inside the terminal, Charles's flight is ready for takeoff. I was ready to go home. It looks like I may not make it. Can't get it figured out with his employer to get it paid for by the time the flight leaves, so we're going to have to try to make other arrangements for him because he's not going to be able to get on this flight, unfortunately. He's going. Sir, go ahead. You're fine. Sorry about that. Here's your receipt. Let's bling bling him on and. There should be two seats. Just Thank the side by side. Thank the Lord. Thank God. Coming with it. Yes, I gave that form okay. to him. Go ahead, sir. Happy right. holidays. Sorry right. about that. Right. Okay. Thank you. Good holiday. Good holiday. We make sure you get you. You guys have a blessed day. Another flight, another dollar. Back in Chicago, the entire airport has turned into a Russian dance festival. Thank you very 
much. You're great. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Such a good host. Thank you so much. Thank you. One more song from him? To me. I want him to sing to me. Like he loves me. No, I'm just kidding. South of the border on airline. And now we're in Mexico. Getting dizzy with a group of do good dentists. She was watching the extraction and felt lightheaded and fainted. Taking charge at check in. Just answer my question. You were on standby for the next be your day. And acting plain loco at BWI. Don't tell me I had a behavior problem before then. Now you have my behavior problem. At Baltimore Washington International, Darlene Tessier has been pulled from the last flight to Fort Lauderdale. You are a and I will say that right to your face. Just pull me off the flight saying I've been drinking with every nosy little mother in the world looking at me. And let me guess, one might be a lawyer, maybe a doctor. I don't know. I don't care. I want to fly. Oh, you're a doctor. Well, doctor this. Guess what? I'm not leaving Baltimore because I'm stuck here. I've been flying for over 15 years. Never been asked to get off a plane in the middle of my flight. If I had one drink, I'm 33 years old. I was asked to leave the plane in the middle of eating my Easter egg. A chocolate Easter egg that any of us here can buy where everyone is looking. Yes, that's me. And I'm not afraid. I now want to do what I do best. Which get the is. out of here and get the home where I belong. At Midway, the 440 flight to Vegas is leaving on time. But Denise is two people short of a full load. It's getting ready to leave in about one minute. And we're missing two people, which is not good, but they won't be going on the flight, I guess. They actually checked in about 2.30, so they actually should be in the, somewhere in the airport. And they're not, so they'll probably be showing up later. A little upset that they didn't get on. They might not even get out tonight. The clock hits 4.40, but there's no sign of the missing passengers. So they already they got their boarding cards at 8 o'clock this morning. Where they are, I don't have a clue. Exiting the checkpoint now. She didn't want to talk to me. At BWI, Nicholas now, hopes to discover what Darlene's doing next. Apparently, she was pretty intoxicated and she is not very happy. And she just didn't give me the opportunity to talk to her to try and help resolve the situation. I'm outside. I am out. Ma, I'll call you back. No, I'm outside. I have one drink. Your stewardess is the one that served me. Down to see my two aunts that died. They're like sisters to me. And I've been crying all the way, and that's what your people took from my eyes. I mean, an Easter egg that you stole for fifty percent off. Now you tell that to my dead aunt. You Southwest and get the out of my face. I've never, ever been treated the way I've been with Southwest and will never okay. fly your flight okay. again. Okay, I understand you're upset. Upset? Okay. My aunts are dead. One was murdered. No, you have no clue. They're not your sisters. You were not raised with them. Says gonna, I apologize. Are you going to have me on the next flight? Well, that's what I'm asking Are you, you. going to have me on the next flight? I mean, if you want to come upstairs, we can yeah. finish us this Well, thing. you know what? I wanted that all out of my life. But can Nicholas find a plan to please Darlene? It's early morning in Dallas, and a group of young students await the arrival of their head honcho. Dr. 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 Bob Davis. Bob Davis. <laughs> he is, um, he's, a, he's a great man with a good heart. He, uh, he makes the trip definitely interesting. 
You ready? Oh, we got an, a camp already here. How about that? Boy, they're early risers, huh? Y'all think you're gonna get the front seat? Dr. T. Bob <laughs> Davis and compadres are heading south of the border to give free dental care to Mexican orphans. At check-in, Ray manages a quick checkup from Dr. T. Bob. Looks like you got a good dentist. He's been taking good care of you. He won't make us any money. <laughs> Would you eat some candy today and maybe some more peanuts? <laughs> okay. I'll have a Snickers bar just yeah, for you. Appreciate it. Good, Mr. Davis. Thanks, see you. Ray. Okay. Okay. We have three minutes to get to the gate, I think. <laughs> I didn't see which one we go to. Door number three. Door three. Okay. <laughs> three minutes. <laughs> Back at Midway, the missing Vegas passengers have finally shown up, but they're too late. We were looking for you. What happened? We just paged you. We, was, we, we uh, just called you. I was in the hospital. We was getting up. Uh, we was getting this. Yeah, it leaves at 440. It's 443. Right. The plane it, gone? It's gone. It just, it just pushed away. Are you serious? Yeah, we leave at 440. It's 442. Right, we leave at 440. Yeah, we was getting um, salad and stuff. Everything is everything is sold out the rest of the night, unfortunately, to Vegas. What we're going to do is put you on a standby list. Let me get the list. For Paul Anderson and girlfriend yeah, Angie, Vegas it's all a question of timing. We missed so, about two minutes. Because we have to leave on time. And, yeah, on time well, that's very good that you guys are leaving on time. That's very good. You're the page right down the hallway. Yeah. Eating. That's very good. I'm very proud of you, Southwest, leaving on time. Out of all of the air prices, it's just going bankruptcy. And, and Southwest, that's why we're not. Good that's job. That's exactly why we're not. Good job. Okay. I'm very proud of you. They don't give you nothing but peanuts on the plane. So we stopped to get something that was edible. And we were like two minutes late. And Southwest was on time. Two minutes. When they showed up, the aircraft was actually pushing back. It was past departure time, so now they're on standby. I'm going to be honest about it now. <laughs> and she's telling me to go. They took it pretty well. I don't know how, if the, when the night goes on and they can't get on, how they're going to take it. I don't want to go, but she's telling me to go because if we don't get a flight to Las Vegas, I'm going to be very upset. BWI pulled passenger Darlene directs her disappointment at Nicholas. No, now I'm upset. Now you want to call me drunk, and now you want to say whatever you want. I don't care. You just still didn't get, explain to me what happened. I'm still trying to understand what happened. I need an happened. Easter egg. You want to see the Easter egg I was eating? Here. I, I don't need to see the Easter oh, egg, Miss Oh, I Tessier. think you want to. Here's my Easter egg. I was eating my Easter egg that you sold for 50% off. You know what? You need the money more than me. Keep well, we, your Easter we egg. We don't sell Easter eggs. That's a specialty store that sells those Easter eggs. Yeah, it's right downstairs. It's in the airport. Okay, so what did that Thank have you, to darling. do with you not being on board the flight? That's what I was eating when I was kicked off the okay. flight, you jerk. Well, apparently that it, that was not the case. It appeared to our flight crew that you were under the influence of alcohol. I'm under... Why? Because I'm eating a... An Easter egg? I'm not too sure about the Easter egg part. All I know we got the call that appeared that you were under the influence of alcohol. If you eat an Easter egg on Southwest Airlines, mind you, you will be removed from the flight. We can address your ticket. Great. We can address your tickets, okay? Now how are you gonna it's okay. one ticket. Get it right. You have a round trip. All right. You have a round trip. One round ticket. trip, one person, okay. that's one ticket, not yeah, tickets. Yeah, Get it right. I'm supposed to be the drunk one. You're supposed to be sober, right? Well, I think I'm very sober. Tick it. Okay, thank you, for the, it. thank you for the correction in the Tick English vocabulary. Thank you for our dentist on board this morning. Dr. T. Bob and his posse of dentists are on their way to Harlingen, Texas. This will be my 29th year to go down there to the orphanage, take care of the orphanage <clears throat> in Madame Morris, the Baptist uh, Casa El Refugio El Hogar whatever the name of the orphanage is, we started taking dental students, and we had 105 one year and 107 last year. This year we have around 80 of us. They're having some drug cartel war down there, and a lot of people have backed out at the last minute because they're scared to go down there. They're afraid we might get 
hijacked or something, or shot at, maybe. Jonathan is a lowly, lowly freshman dental student. I'm just a first year. He's a first year. They keep he, us in the basement. He doesn't know what's going to happen. He has no idea what's going on. Do I get to put my hands in anyone's mouth? Well, you might. Okay. You might, but you be careful. They might bite it, okay? <laughs> There's a little problem with communications at times, and so we open their mouth and point, point you and me and, and smile real big, and they know what we're about to do. Back in Chicago, Paul is still perplexed by the uncertainty of his situation. Answer my question. You were on standby. I'm on the next flight. Your day. Hey, sir. Are we going to be on the next flight? Sir, and I'm telling you, just side. say yes or no. We can't stand by. When you're on the standby. If your seat's available, you will get on. She just said over there that there will be no more flights. Okay. Now, am I going to be on a flight? Don't yeah. tell me no. And we I can book can't. somewhere else. Okay, I mean, and that's always your choice. So I want to know. So I, you know, I don't be we wasting no time with y'all. Explain People it to you. But don't show up like you. You booked, but you didn't show up. So that means that we have the chance of getting a standby on flight. The next flight that we can confirm you on is at 8.20 tonight. Okay? You can always go standby up to that point. You may get on the 5.30. That's also full. Darlene is still at BWI. So don't tell me I had a behavior problem before that. Now you have my behavior problem. Okay, but we're, we're not going to oh, continue this behavior problem. We're not. Is. What? Do you have a flight you're going to put me on right now that puts me to my sister's grave? There is no flight no? left to Fort Lauderdale. No, she just tonight. got buried two weeks ago. Her stone was just put on there. Do you have a flight? Ma no, I'm you don't. To help you, but you need to help me to help you. I will never ever again, ever fly Southwest Airlines. I rescheduled her for tomorrow morning, first flight at 7 a.m. And I explained to her that, you know, her behavior that she displayed tonight cannot continue into tomorrow morning. And uh, once she is calm and her behavior doesn't reflect her behavior tonight, then she'll be okay with, with getting to Fort Lauderdale tomorrow morning. Anybody want to answer it? At Midway, Paul is not taking perhaps for an answer, but he gets a surprise call. Hello. B-17? No, I don't. Yeah, he told me to stay on this side. He said stay on this side. Yeah. Bye, baby. So you're going over there? And they confirmed that flight for right now. Looks like Anita got them on the next flight, right across the hall, flight 1248. So they're on their way to Vegas, and I guess they're happy. I'm totally proud of you, especially. You need a promotion. She needs a promotion. And she needs a promotion. I'm very happy that my luggage is not playing slots, and I ain't. <laughs> We're very happy. Bye-bye. At BWI, Carol thinks two Hispanic passengers have gotten off in Baltimore, thinking they're in Raleigh, North Carolina. We're looking for uh, passengers from Flight 721 going to Raleigh, Durham. Well, we're getting ready to board the throughs right now, because the aircraft that we're using is here. Uh, so we probably have 15, 20 minutes tops. Uh, we've done the airport page, and we've done pages all through the concourses with no luck yet. I have supervisors looking for them down in baggage service. Carol, I've walked all along the outside on the upper level, and there's nobody out here. And I have a feeling when they got off here, they think they're in Raleigh. So, go ahead, Gina. Cigna 721 leave. They're boarding now. You may have your passengers. Hold on. Gina thinks that she might have them at the tape count. Hey, Carol, never mind. They weren't. Lost in over half a million square feet of airport, will they make the last flight to Raleigh?
Dr. T. Bob and company make their way across the border into Mexico. And now we're in Mexico. Here we are. We've entered Matamoros. It's just a whole different world. It changes really quickly. <laughs> just as you cross over, it's really kind of dirty and poor looking. <laughs> it is a high military presence right now because of the drug cartel problems in the area. The United States government issued a warning of a couple of months ago about travel into Matamoros. There have been abductions, haven't there? There have been abductions, there yes, have been kidnappings, there have been murders. They, they actually, right out here somewhere nearby, uh, they killed six of the guards at the prison. Six of them were in a car wow. and were all murdered at one time by the drug people. North of the border, Carol fears the missing amigos are still lost and bewildered at BWI. I think they might believe they're in Raleigh, but they actually are in Baltimore. We've probably got five or six more minutes. They've already left security, then they're kind of wandering. What's the name of those passengers we're looking for? Well, we made four pages in about a 25-minute period. All right, well, unless they've already left, got the bit. Will you just look one more time out baggage service? I'm just wondering if they're down there at, um, at arrivals. Yeah, let's just give it one minute. They made the announcement, but then let's go. Last name Chavez and Gonzalez. Yeah, we're leaving. It looks like we're leaving. We haven't found them. Um, no one's responded to any of the pages. No one's located anybody, so we're going. It's already 20 minutes delayed, unfortunately. My guess is they'll spend the night in the airport. But have the missing men passed Carol by in the night? Down Mexico way, Dr. T-Bob's team make it safely to the orphanage and find a long line of eager customers. All lined up. Well, they have nice smiles. We'll just see what it looks like <laughs> once they open their mouth. As you can see, they're not hesitant at all about getting their dental care. I think they enjoy coming. Yeah, we need to get going. We need to get doctors working. We need to get patients in chairs. Dr. Smith from Dallas. She's going to be seeing our first patient of the day. I asked her, ¿Qué duele? And, uh, ¿Dónde hay problema? Where's the problem? And where, what is hurting? And she pointed to the specific sites. Now, they've listed six teeth here that need attention. Jonathan, your job is going to be to keep her from drowning, okay. okay? My job is to get them out of pain so that we can get their trust and teach them that that's a limited experience, but Christ is a permanent experience. Touching, loving, hugging, all of those things express why we're here. Then when the Americans come back, they're not afraid. For some, it's a shock to the system. She was watching extraction and felt lightheaded and fainted. How are you? <laughs> Embarrassed is the word. <laughs> oh, and don't you be ashamed of that. We wanted to have a show and tell. We wanted to show reality in the dental office, and we did it today. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Next in the hot seat will be seven-year-old Jesus. Aren't we having fun, huh? Isn't it neat? He's such a super kid. Stateside at BWI, there's good news and bad news. Um, well, we found uh, Mr. Gonzalez and Mr. Chavez. Uh, they were going through security. Bob actually saw them. So uh, I'm telling them now that their plane is gone. Uh, do you speak English? Uh, no. Espanol. OK. Um, yeah, the plane has left. So we need to get you on a flight tomorrow. Now, Carol must find a way to get her message across. Are you able to assist me in translation? I don't know that we have any Spanish-speaking employees here right now. I'm trying to find Veda. Is she in there? Did she? Oh, she left, like, for the night? We want to kind of communicate with them that we can rebook them for tomorrow and give them that information and see if that's what they want to do. Habla español. Bueno. Norte Carolina. No, yo me puedo mover. Yo ahorita voy a conseguir un rate. Hello, Elizabeth. All right. Bye bye. They say they want to find their own transportation, so I'm assuming they have someone in the area or they're going to try to work something else out. She explained to them their options, so they do know there's a flight tomorrow morning they could take. Uh, which probably is going to get them there quicker. It's like a six-hour drive, isn't it? It's a long journey into the night for Erasmo and Margarito. <laughs> it's 
south of the border, there may be complications for Jesus. He smiles a lot. <laughs> he smiles a lot, but I don't think he will be very long. The decay is so deep, a specialist has to be called in. We're in the process of getting the child anesthetized. It can be a little scary. If you deal with kids, you deal with it every day. He doesn't understand the numb feeling. It's not hurting him now. He just doesn't understand it. We would give them some sedation. We don't have that capability here. I know it's the best thing. It's really not hurting him. Almost done. Yeah, let's take that out. We've got the crown set on the bottom, and now we're trying to get the tooth out on the top. Cielo Boca. Cielo Boca. That's just a rotten tooth. He did great. That's a lot of work for a little guy. The only human mouth that I've been near before was our cadaver in Gross Anatomy, so this is the first live human mouth that I've been around. Okay. So it's a, it's a different experience. Um, you know, you can make someone bleed if you poke them, so you got to be real careful where you're poking. But it, there are big problems in there that you can fix, so it's kind of cool. We've accomplished more this year than ever before. The whole trip is a spectacular demonstration of what American young people can do. They came. They did it. That's what we're about, making the impact in our world. It's all down to the wire on Airline today, as parents go missing. They've been doing it for 45 minutes now, so they should be right about here. Hi. A mother needs a helping hand. Oh, man, I got drool all over my shirt. And a passenger's bag gets the glove treatment. Don't bend over. Every second counts when you get to the airport. Hold, hold the plate, hold the plate. If you miss your flight, you could be stranded for hours. Pay for the rental car and we'll drive home. I can get home in Detroit less than four hours. And in the rush to catch your plane, sometimes the most important things can get left behind. At LAX, abandoned bags outside the terminal could create a security alert for the whole airport. I was called out to the curb because there are some unattended bags here, and usually when there are unattended bags, we can check the tag, Southwest tag, we'll page them overhead. Usually they're within a couple of couple of steps away from the bag. We can reprimand them, and then they're there with their bags. Well, in this case, they don't have Southwest Airlines um, tags at all. They have Greyhound bus tags, which is a little bit perplexing. Yolanda has already alerted the airport police. We're gonna get the dog to sniff and determine if there are any explosives in the bags and, um, and clear them that way. With the bags declared safe, the police begin trawling through their contents to find clues about their owner. Over at Midway, Colleen is closing the flight to Providence. Passenger Scott Johnson is ready to board, but his elderly parents have disappeared. Uh, my mother is elderly. She's got incontinence problems today, and they're changing her, and we're trying to get her on the plane. She's got on a wheelchair. That's what's going on. But I don't know if they're going to make it. When it rains, it pours, you know? It's only two minutes. Yeah, well, you know what? We can look at putting you on the next flight. You can do that? Yeah. Can you look at it now? Because yeah. is it possible? Let's, let's Let take a look. I want to look up here to see if they're... Okay. Yeah. We're two minutes of departure, so I'm not sure we're going to be able to get them on this flight. We may have to put them on another flight. I'll wait until the park is on. Yeah. Um, all right, let me go see if I can find out where they are. I don't know who's helping her. They've been doing it for... 45 minutes now, so it should be right about here. Yeah. I think. She may be having a problem in the in the restroom, and maybe I can give well, her a hand. They had all sorts of attendance and everything. They did? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't see them. Back 
in LA, Yolanda's mystery takes an unusual turn. Airport manager Danielle has come across a man who she thinks owns the unattended bags. Take the money out of the wall, put it in your pocket. That's where you lose it. I was walking over and I saw this gentleman in the corner and he was kind of leaning over and acting suspicious and I asked him if he was okay. He leaned up and said he's fine and I asked him if he was traveling today he said no. He uh, then stated that he was going to Salt Lake City tonight at 7.30, asked him if he had any luggage, he said he didn't know, so then we kind of put two and two together and think that is possibly his luggage outside. Um, he's unable to stand, um, we're just trying to check his ID right now. What, what did you drink? You drank here or you drank back on the plane? Huh? You been drinking? No. You been smoking weed? You been doing drugs? Are you always acting like this? With little information to go on, the police decide to detain the man for his own safety. Back in Chicago, there's still no sign of Scott's parents, and the flight is ready to leave. When will I, they close the door? Do you know how long till they close? Well, the we're door? at departure now, and we can. Lisa can give you another minute or two. But if we okay. don't, if we're, if they're not here, I think we're going to look at maybe I agree. Get, I the agree. next that's, flight. If I that's okay with you. I, I told okay. You that, but I really appreciate you. Yeah, not, not a problem. I'm going to walk to there and don't. But I got. I don't want my stuff on the plane. I walk right to that escalator and just look that way. Okay, but I only, Scott. I can only give you another minute or two. Okay. I don't feel good about it at all because she's not well right now, and it's. You know, I mean, it's a crisis. Because she's in a wheelchair, I want to make it easier to get her on the plane. Scott, we gotta go. Okay. We wanna grab your gear, and then yeah. we'll look at getting you on the next one. Yeah. Okay, I don't see anybody. Okay. I'm getting my gear off the plane because I went and reserved some seats. At the ticket counter, 18 huge boxes destined for LA mean a stressful race against time for Morrow. There's uh, six passengers. They're traveling, obviously, but uh, I guess they're moving. So now we've got 16 or 18 boxes or something. All these boxes have to be checked. Technically, they can travel, they can go, even though you know we're not no moving company, but each person is checking three boxes. These are all fine. It seems like they're all under 70 pounds, too. But the, uh, the one thing, though, <laughs> is that every single one of these boxes have to be signed for. OK, we got a problem. Their flight leaves in 25 minutes. None of these are checked in. But there's no sign of the six passengers. Over in departure, with no sign of his parents, Scott removes his bags from the plane. So are you guys taking the other one? You got it? Thank you. Sorry about that. That's OK. <laughs> Tell her not to pull it yet. Suddenly, good news. Here she comes, here she comes. Let's go, hold the, hold the plate, hold the plate. Hold it, hold the plate. She's here. She's here. She's here. Great. You guys are good. <laughs> she filmed her face. <laughs> they said, somebody just said she's here. It's not hard, it's not hard. You sure? Them. I'm sorry. I thought I saw the wheelchairs and I ran down, but it wasn't oh, them. Good try. I'm sorry. It was the wrong one. I tried. With no flight and no Thanks parents, so. will Scott Johnson ever make it home? At LAX, Larry Giavelli has missed his flight to Seattle, but hopes to get on the last flight leaving at seven. You checked in your bags. It's four o'clock. You checked your bags at 10:30 this morning. Right. So where were where were you from 10:30 to? I've been wandering here all around, and nobody has told me where to go. You've been in the airport wandering for five and a half hours, looking yes. for a flight. Yes. Okay. Now one of the things is that I can smell alcohol. Have you been drinking? Yes, I have. Okay. Uh, one of the things that we do is is that we we Be sober to fly. You're clear on that, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So if between now and, and the time your flight leaves... you're going to sit and wait. 
I like it. Before that fight leaves, we're gonna have to come back and just make sure that you're you're not smelling like alcohol. You might want to get some food. You get two hours and 45 minutes before your fight leaves, and we're gonna have to assess the situation as that goes on. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. Your eyes are closed. Is there is there something reason? Well, I wear glasses. I'm just oh, you like yeah. me. Okay. All right. Maybe it was I was ugly or something. Oh no. <laughs> Trust me, you are. But. <laughs> Do you right. need to call somebody or let them know what's going on? No, they know. They all yelled at me. They all yelled at you? Yes. Yeah. So what the <laughs> Okay. I know you're stupid, but you ain't that stupid. All right. Have you missed your, ever missed a flight before? No, I've never flown before in my life. Really? Is really? that why you were drinking, or...? Yeah, because I'm um, you know, a um, big old tin thing go down real fast. So you're nervous? Yes. Okay. Nothing to be nervous about. We're a very safe airline. And I'll check back on you in a bit, okay? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Lawrence. I guess we're just gonna have to wait and see, you know, what happens. I mean, he's got three hours almost before his next flight, so he seems very cooperative. Get some food in him. We'll take him there. I don't think we should have any problems with him as long as he doesn't go to the bar between now and then. In Chicago, the six passengers arrive, a mom and her five kids, including an eight-month-old infant. Eighteen boxes mean a lot of paperwork, and they are running out of time. Morrow is left holding the baby. You're going to throw up on me, are you? <laughs> they can make the flight, but we got to call down there. I got to call a... Uh... Can you do me a favor? Grab the radio. See if you can call the soup. Hey, this is Morrow up at the ticket counter. We've got a party of six and a lap child that are going to be going on your flight. The last name is uh, Milson, M-I-L-L-I-S-O-N. They're going to be uh, traveling on your flight. We're just checking them in right now. Can you call B5 for me and let them know that we got a party coming down? Oh, man, I got drool all over my shirt. I'll trade you. The Millicent family should safely make their flight. You guys look at his hands, okay? <laughs> but it's going to be down to the wire for their luggage. So I already called T-Point where the bags go down and told them that they have 18 boxes that are late checked. And hopefully they make them. You know, they make them with the bags. Because if not, it's just a lot harder to travel. If you think about it, you're gonna have to get a U-Haul, you're gonna have to rent. She had five kids or whatever situation may be. This is the cheapest route. You know, we could, we, Southwest takes three bags or three items per person. Some people know the ins and outs of it. In LA, Mike checks up on Larry Giavelli. I was just checking on it, see how you doing? Uh, lost. You lost, you're at the right gate. I am at the right gate. So we still got a little time. Did you get some food? Uh, no, I haven't because I don't want to leave the gate because then I'll be lost. Yeah. And you can't leave your bags behind because there's criminals around here. And you're at the right gate. Angela's over here. The gate's not going to change for now. So I did walk around. And uh, your eyes are a little bit more open, which is a good thing. So. Right on. And how are you feeling? Uh, hungry. <laughs> you're hungry? Hell yeah. So you might want to get up some food? To get yes. McDonald's? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir, for all your pleasure. He's not drinking. He's very lucid. So I think he's going to be okay. Mike's confident he will make the flight, but Larry has other plans. Uh, wait for my flight, uh, find a bar, and have some alcohol. That's all he does, get inebriated, and hopefully not miss a flight again. In Chicago, there's only one more direct flight to Providence, and Scott Johnson's parents are still missing. We're gonna make sure that you guys make that last flight. We're not gonna put you in a standby situation. Just because, I mean, is Dad in a wheelchair also? He should be. He's pushing the wheelchair now. It's weird when your parents start losing it. Yeah, I know. I... Well, the, the diarrhea, I mean, something you couldn't predict. We were all loaded, and then she had to go to the bathroom, and then we got out, and then she got to go again, and you know, it's like that kind of thing. You get three or four 20 minute, 40, 30 minute stops on the way, and it's like a problem. Yeah. What do you do? If it happened to you, you deal with it. Colleen and Nikki continue their search. I don't think they, I think, I think her, the accident she had was before they came through security. I'm gonna check with baggage service to see if she's down there. Oh. 
In LA, there are still questions surrounding the owner of the unattended bags. Yolanda is determined to find some answers. Well, it seems as though we may have found the owner of those bags that we were looking at, and he seems to be under the influence of something. We haven't determined what, but the, the uh, police are going to take, take care of him now from this point on. Before they take him away, the police want to know if the mystery man is booked on any flight leaving LAX tonight. So if he is a passenger of ours, we're going to try to contact someone and just let them know sort of what's going on with them. I'm not seeing that he has any reservation on Southwest Airlines today. So we'll just tell the police that. At Midway, baggage services are dealing with an unusual problem. A bag has been damaged in transit, and it seems to be buzzing. Last time we, we had a bag that was humming and we thought it was a toothbrush, and we went inside to turn it off, it wasn't a toothbrush. So they're not too anxious to go in there and turn it off this time. It was a little gadget for your enjoyment in there. <laughs> I won't say what it was. <laughs> Benjamin Pattis, please report to the Southwest Airlines Baggage Service Office. But we paged the customer and we're just gonna see what's gonna happen. So when he comes in, we'll find out. Back at Midway, the search for Scott's parents is oh. finally over. Are you Carlton? Carlton? Yes. Oh, you're Edith? Yeah. How are you? How are you doing? Are you doing okay? okay. I hope so. Yeah. Huh? I don't know what time is. is there anything we can help you with? Unfortunately, the aircraft had to push, but we got you confirmed on the next flight out. Okay. Okay. You found me. Okay. All right, I found you. <laughs> okay, come on, Edith. We'll go back to the gate Scott's at, okay? Okay. <laughs> It's up to you. Hey, hey, the plane is still at the gate. You want to make real scores? Get, get out of here. It's right on the tarmac. It's sitting right there. Oh, is it pushed off the gate? Yeah. If it's pushed off the back. gate, Scott, I can't bring it back. Mom's still not feeling well. She'll have a few hours to just kind of rest and see how things go. The son was really hopeful they would be able to make that flight, but he couldn't tell what restroom they'd gone into, so they'll be fine. It actually worked out well in the end. It gets things settled down, you know? Three hours later, they are finally on the way home to Providence. <laughs> Are you going to take your own picture when you get run over? <laughs> in L.A., Larry has remained in the gate area, but hasn't gone unnoticed. It's the same thing. He comes up to me every five minutes, and he'll ask me if he's on the flight. I already told him he's on the flight. I told him, go ahead. Head, take a seat, you know, and I'll get you in a few minutes. He just came up to me again. I didn't even say anything. I just said, go sit down. <laughs> it's every few minutes. It's like, and he doesn't remember. That's the thing. So it's like, I know he's still drunk. It, it's in his eyes. And he's right. It's more than, it's more than alcohol. Outside, Yolanda has discovered the mystery man's name, but there's still no answer as to why he's at LAX. She's found a contact number to call. Hi, I called and I, this is Yolanda calling from Southwest Airlines, and I called and I had spoken. Oh, did I speak to you before? Yeah, we found Bobby here at uh, LAX airport. The name on the driver's license is Singh. Yeah, Singh is his last name, yeah. So, uh, but they're taking him, um, he's been, Detained. The police officers are taking him in the police car, I think, to the station. Uh-huh. Oh. Oh. Who were we talking to? The we were talking to, yeah, he had just uh, had been working for a restaurant for one month. The guy that I spoke to fired him and took him to put him on the bus to Provo. He said he got on the bus. I said, yeah, but then he apparently got off the bus because so he's here. it doesn't sound like he's having a very good day. He's not having a good day, no. And I really wanted to try to get a hold of somebody just so that someone knew. He doesn't know where he is, so I was hoping to be able to tell someone else. Take care of yourself. 
Bye bye. Bye. Black, thanks, guys. Back at Midway, backup has arrived. Angel is preparing to get to the bottom of the buzzing bag mystery. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> we heard something vibrating in your bag. We didn't know what it was. It was your toothbrush. It looked like it must have got caught on a conveyor belt or something. We're going to reimburse him for the damaged items, which we're giving him a new bag. And then he's going to tell me how much he paid for his pajama outfit. Is that it? The pajama outfit? Yeah. He was wonderful. He was happy he got a new bag, and plus he got a travel voucher. Back at LAX, Bronwyn finds some interesting information about Larry. We've just pulled up his reservation again, and apparently his brother has called into our reservation center saying that his brother does have a mental impairment, including motor skill problems, and, you know, please to assist him in any way, which would, to me, would, could explain why he is passive, yet his eyes seem, you know, a little, they're not bloodshot, they just don't seem to be opening all the way. I'm lost. Okay. Well, you're going to Seattle, right? Yes, ma'am. You missed your earlier flight? Yes, ma'am. Did you change? Yeah, because I got lost. Uh, I've never flown before. How are we doing now? Um, still lost. Still lost? Yes, ma'am. Now, um, you're supposed to get on this flight here, go into Sacramento, and then change planes in Sacramento. Are you going to be OK doing that? Uh, if there's like a help for retards and stuff, yeah, I can do it. Bronwyn phones ahead to ensure Larry's journey is problem free. Well, we're going to go ahead and um, get him on this flight, and then he's going to um, change planes in Sacramento, and he'll get to Seattle tonight at 10.30 about, uh, uh, on flight 134. Finally, Larry's on his way. 